Hey there and welcome to my March 2022 video. Um, I don't seem to have coordinated my hair very well with my t-shirt today. It's um, kind of clashing with my Adventure Zone Balance t-shirt, so never mind. Uh, without further ado, let's get started. I'll start this video with my shortest category, which is books. And in a surprise to nobody, if anyone's watched the last couple of videos, I am still reading through Belgareth the Sorcerer. Um, I am nearly done. I am 600 pages in now of the 800 or so in the book. Um, I have got to the point now where I kind of feel like a lot of this book is fluff. Um, it could probably be half of this size and still have the same impact. Um, I guess it'll be interesting to see how it ends, but uh, I think the longer it's taken me to read this book, uh, the more I'm kind of wondering how much of it really needed to be in there. I am still enjoying it, don't get me wrong. Um, I am still very much enjoying the story, but it just seems to kind of go back and forth and this overarching plot probably could have been over and done with much sooner, but um, we'll see how it goes and I promise I will get it finished in April so I can move on to talking about something else. Moving on to crafts, I've got a few things to talk about here. The first one is a 2013, I believe, um, Lego kit for the Back to the Future uh, DeLorean model. Uh, so this is what I've got here. I actually bought this for my husband some years ago and came to the realisation kind of 10 years on that he probably wasn't going to make it. So I decided to open the kit and make it myself. Um, there's a couple of variations you can make to this in terms of making it look more like, um, you know, the first, second or third films. Uh, the tyres can kind of go underneath the vehicle and different things. There's a few different adornments you can have on top of the vehicle, but I do like uh, it as it looks at the moment. The doors open, which I won't do because the figures fall out really easily. Um, so I'll just leave those as is. And I do have to say the uh, piping up the side of the car if you look at it the wrong way, it will just pop off. Um, so I may look at gluing that at some point, but uh, all in all, it's a nice kit. It's a good size too. It was a fun build. Um, again, fairly quick. I just think I get through these models way too quickly when I start building them. Um, but yeah, I believe they've also just come out with, or they're about to come out with a new uh, Back to the Future kit, which is uh, much more expensive than this one was, but uh, Yes, it looks very nice, but I'm glad that this is uh, finally built and in our collection. The next thing that I made in March was a jigsaw of London um, that I actually had last year for my birthday. It's just taken me a while to get around to doing it. It's a thousand piece jigsaw. When I first started building it, I did worry that I would actually struggle to put it together. It's very beige with uh, limited colours. I think, you know, red and black are kind of the only main colours really on the jigsaw. Um, I will obviously include a picture and a link to where you can purchase the jigsaw. One thing that I did realise as I was starting to separate out the pieces to try and figure out where everything went was uh, there are actually letters printed on the back of the pieces um, which signify which uh, quarter of the jigsaw that they actually belong to and that made it much much easier to put it together. Um, I do think I would have really struggled otherwise um, but it was a really nice jigsaw actually in the end. Um, lots of fun details in there to look at so uh, if you do fancy a London jigsaw that's a bit unusual um, I would uh, recommend it. As I say I'll include a link so you can see um, where it is to purchase. I think it's fairly cheap on Amazon uh, most of the time. It's about eight to ten pounds, I think, usually. So uh, go ahead and pick it up. The biggest time sink for me in March was um, painting some minis for a skirmish game called Rain in Hell, um, which some of you uh, may have heard of. Um, it's written by Adam of Tabletop Minions YouTube and uh, Vince, who uh, has the Hobby Cheating YouTube channel and he also does the Warhammer Weekly podcast. Um, they're very well known it seems in the hobby space in terms of painting and also um, you know gameplay and obviously having written this game together I believe they're also working on another one together at the moment. Um, so the models I used were actually um, Games Workshop Corn Demons which I've uh, painted in my own style and kit bashed some bits together. Um, there's 10 models in all I'll show a couple off here, but I'll put some um, pictures 
on the video to show them off a bit more just because there's so many for me to to go through my favorite one is uh this guy uh, who i actually bought some uh, wings off ebay and stuff onto the model and i think it turned out really well um i handmade the lava bases for them all which um they're not not particularly great but i'm quite happy with them um you know i'm not the best painter in the world but you know it does the job uh, but this guy as i say is yeah definitely my favorite um i also uh, had my first go at using uh green stuff um, I gave this guy a bit of a, a chunky belly, if you can see that there, um, possibly. As I say, it's quite difficult to show off on camera because they're so tiny. Um, but yeah, I uh, gave him a bit of a, a bit of a chubby belly. Um, what were the other big changes I did? I've got a night horn scythe on this guy. I think I've got an iron golem a hammer on this one. I think I've also got a skaven staff on yes on this guy um i put a skaven staff on him um he's the tentacle beast so i've got a 3d printed tentacle stuck on there um, my husband's actually printed off some more um that i might try and fit on the base if i can or i might actually take this one off and replace it with another one um i just need to spend some time looking at it but um yeah they are my rain and hell demons and uh my husband are also printed and painted some demons as well so i'm looking forward to giving the game a go because we've not tried it yet um, there is also a solo um campaign that you can download now which i've not tried and um, you can buy it in physical book format obviously which i showed off before but you can also just buy the pdf as well and i will include a link to those so you can go and have a look and see if you fancy picking it up my video game time in March was um, quite limited due to the amount of time that I spent um, painting these 10 demons for Rain and Hell, um, but I did play some uh, usual staples that, again, if anyone's watched these videos before, will come as no surprise. The first being Animal Crossing New Horizons. That's still one, as I say, even if I don't get to play it every day, I will go back to and um, have a run around, check in with my villagers, um, I have actually started redoing my house, which is something that I've wanted to do for quite some time. Um, now I feel like I've collected a lot of the furniture that the expansion has to offer. I've been redoing my house. Um, so, uh, yes, hopefully that will be finished probably more in April's video, I would imagine, because there's still a fair bit to do. But um, yeah, as ever, that is still a game I really enjoy. Um, just so many hours playing that game. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, if there's a new version of Animal Crossing that will come out on a new Nintendo console that will inevitably come out at some point. It took them a while to get Animal Crossing's New Horizons out on the Switch, but uh, it's definitely been one of my games that I've played the most, and it was a godsend over COVID. So um, yes, thanks Nintendo and thank you Animal Crossing. Another game I won't spend too much time talking about is Apex Legends. Uh, we do tend to play it every weekend, if not every Tuesday as well, so it's just one that we always go back to. Um, I think we finally got to the end of the battle pass. It was probably one of the weaker battle passes for me, just because a lot of the cosmetics are for characters that I don't play, which is you know, fair enough, you win some, you lose some. Um, I have actually finally got some heirloom shards to spend as well, but I can't decide which character I want to spend them on. Um, I really want Mirage's statue, but I don't play him all that much. So I kind of feel like I should get Lifeline's drumsticks, but then they're just not very exciting. Um, so yeah, I'll have to make a decision at some point because otherwise I'll just be hoarding these shards forever. I've still been going back to Vampire Survivors when new patches are released. There are still versions coming out. Uh, it seems like every couple of weeks at the moment, so uh, there's plenty of new content to go back to. I'd actually finally got all of the achievements in that game and then a new patch came out so I've got some new achievements to work towards so um, looking forward to jumping back in and getting those finished but I love every update that comes along for that game whether it's just the new characters or a new weapon or a new level uh, he's put in so much time and effort into getting that game out there and it's still only two pounds I'm not sure how much it's going to cost when it finally comes out but if you are interested at all, pick it up for the £2 because there's hours and hours of gameplay there if uh, if that's your sort of thing and I would highly recommend. 
Another game that I played during March was Deep Rock Galactic and I completely forgot to record some video of that when I was playing. Um, I don't know why, um, but you know, never mind, nobody's perfect. Uh, so I'll include a link to the Steam store page or uh, maybe a link to the YouTube trailer. Um, I'm guessing it's about on there, um, just so you can have a look what it's about. It's a very unusual mix of games. Um, it's kind of Minecraft crossed with Terraria, crossed with a first person shooter with a horde mode, kind of like Left for Dead and Back for Blood, but with bugs and mining. It's very unusual and the art style is very distinctive. The humor's really funny. Uh, the soundtrack's really good, um, particularly the jukebox on the uh, space station. It's, yeah, very hard to describe. You can play it with uh, multiple people as well. I think up to four people can play. And there's also a bot that you can take around if you want to play single player. So, you know, multiplayer's not for everyone. Uh, and I believe that the bot that you get to take around is pretty decent. I haven't tried it, but maybe one day I will get around to trying that out so I can actually tell people what I think of it. But it's great fun in multiplayer. We played it before it came out, kind of in the, the 1.0 release. I think it had a free weekend and we spent all weekend playing it and purchased it immediately. And we've been playing it ever since, really. We don't play it constantly, you know, it's not in our sort of weekly rotation or whatever, but when we do go back to it, we always remember how much fun we have playing it. And uh, season one is about to come to a close, so I'm looking forward to what they'll announce for season two. So that's everything from me for my March 2022 video. These guys took up uh, most of my time during the month. I am not a very quick mini painter. Um, but uh, hopefully this video will be a bit more condensed than my other ones because they have been running pretty long. So I've been trying to uh, squish them down and make them a bit shorter. But as ever, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in April 2022. Bye for now.